tail, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This episode, we're going to be rehousing another Zanesta species. I've told folks that I have just about all the ones available on the market right now and that I would do a video for each, even though the care is very similar. So this time around, we're looking at Zanesta species Tenebris. Really enjoying this one because it's one of the only ones I keep besides the species blue that I can actually tell apart from the other ones. Now, the Zanestis species Tenebris is thought to be possibly the Zanestis monstrosa. These large terrestrials come from Colombia. I found mine to be very fast growing and hardy and females can reach a size of up to eight inches or more and they can be skittish kick hairs when younger, but supposedly they can calm down a bit when they put on some size, which is a good thing because nobody wants a really skittish, giant, leggy, eight plus inch spider. So enough of me talking, let's take a look at Zanestis tenebris, its care and its new digs. All right, so continuing with my rehousing and husbandry videos for Zanestis species, I told folks that I would do one for each individual quote unquote species that I have, because a lot of these, I wonder if they're just the same spiders from different locales, but this one is Zanestis species tenebris. I got this one as a sling in January 21st of 2021. And like the other one, she's been growing, or I hope she, we'll see, has been growing quite quickly. Now, to start off as a sling, these guys start off very leggy. I'll open this, oh, oh, she's gonna try to hide. They start off very leggy. And so for slings, I start them off in larger containers than I would normally put slings in. So this one was started off in a M Design kitchen and pantry storage container, which is about six and a half inches by five inches by four inches. And I don't know if Billy's gonna be able to poke, but it's right up there, the one that the age dictator is in. One of those in there I tend to use for my larger slings or larger or smaller juveniles. Then we put her into this here. I like this for the juveniles. This is the Sistema 1830 Clip It storage container. It's 9.3 inches by 7.7 .7 inches by 4.7 inches or so. I use these, I love these for my juveniles. Again, they're made out of that same type of plastic Sterilite's made out of, so they're a little milky, but again, juvenile stage, I'm not really looking to show them off all that much, and they're just gonna outgrow it in a short amount of time anyway. So now what we are putting her into, now that she is a sub-adult, and I'm gonna put this on just so she doesn't get extra scared, is this here. I've been trying these out. This is the Sterilite ID latch. It's 12.7 quarts or measures 15 and a quarter inches by 11 and a half inches by six inches tall. So I've been putting my young adults into these and they've been working out really well. Very easily ventilated. I did this with a drill. I think I might have used an eighth of an inch. It was around there. Everybody always asks what size I use. Holes on all four sides. They've been working out really well. A little smaller than the other ones I usually use, but again, this will not be her final home. Once these guys are completely grown and big, beautiful females, they will probably get something along the lines of a 10 to 15 gallon acrylic enclosure because I do want to show them off. But what we have in here, cork bark hide, which mine, uh, the other Zanesta species that I rehouse have been using their hides. They did a little digging, they kind of stay in there. We got some nice green sphagnum moss. The dirt is a mixture of vermiculite, peat, and cocoa fiber. I'm trying to use that up. I threw a little bit of leaf litter in here. She's not gonna be in there forever, so I don't wanna waste all my leaf litter. Plus, I'm running low, but I do like the way it looks. It gives it a little extra sparkle, and then she will have a water dish. So what we're gonna do is try to get her from point A to point B as uneventfully as possible. I did forget to put on my gloves, which I usually use with Zanesta species because they will kick hairs and I found that my hands are and arms are particularly sensitive to them. So we'll try to get her into from here into here with hopefully me not getting majorly hair. And then we'll talk a bit about feeding and temperatures and such. What the heck was that? I knock something over. I think we'll use Simply Limeade. Let me get this out of the way. Simply limeade. Where's my other brush? And usually, what they'd like to do is stick the little butts right up in the air. So I go, whoop, whoop, easy, easy. Whoop. There we go. Caught it on the edge there. And there she is. There we go. 
All right, so I know I keep talking about the fact they all kind of look similar to me with the exception of the blues because the Zanesta species blues do have that vibrant blue on their legs. But this one I will say has had a darker overall appearance the entire time and the coloration on the carapace has been a much deeper, almost violet color after a molt. As you can see, she's kind of bald there. I will feed her again in a bit and I'm hoping after her next molt that carapace will pop a little bit more, but beautiful spider nonetheless. As with all the other ones, very leggy, very, very fast as slings. That's probably the thing that's impressed me the most about these guys is just how fast they can move as slings. And I think I've mentioned before and other folks have chimed in about theirs that a lot of times they will tackle a sling and they barrel roll and end up on their backs. It's the coolest thing ever. So up there with Formictopus as far as the ferocity they hunt with. Now, as far as feeding is concerned, slings I always feed usually twice a week or so. And with these guys, they were taking kind of medium crickets right off the bat. As they put on some size, hit like two inches, they were eating large crickets, no problem. This one now will get a couple large crickets. As adults, I would feed them large dubia, large uh, one large dubia, couple large roaches, couple large crickets, something around, around there. Usually once they get around this side, it's every two weeks or so, but pick a schedule that works for you. I know folks that feed them bigger meals and only feed them once a month, and that's totally fine. With my guys, I was trying to get them to grow a little bit more quickly, only because I wanted them out of that delicate sling stage, and I wanted to be able to show them off because I know a lot of folks were curious to hear how mine were doing. Now, as far as temperatures are concerned, temperatures in the tarantula room in the summertime run from high 70s to mid 80s at times, or around 84, I usually keep it. It gets a little higher on a occasion. In the winter time, it's usually kept right around 73 or 74 degrees, depending on the shelf they're on. However, there are times where the temperature will drop a bit. It takes a while for the heat to catch up because it gets super cold outside, in which case it may drop to the 60s. As long as it does it for a little bit, it hasn't bothered them at all, and they've continued to grow great and molt well right through those cooler temps. Now, temperaments, they are skittish. I'm surprised this one is just sitting here. She's actually being incredibly well-behaved. My other ones, as slings, were fairly skittish. As juveniles and young adults, very, very skittish. But I have noticed some of them are putting on a little more size now and are kind of calming down a bit. So we'll have to see. A lot of times with tarantula species, they start off very skittish because in the wild, they have to avoid prey. And when they get a little bit older, they get a little more bold and a little less uh, likely to run or, in the case of these guys, kick hairs. And mine have been rather kicky. You can see with that girl there, she's definitely kicked some hair. Now, as far as moisture is concerned, as slings, I kept them all moist. As juveniles, I would keep part of it moist. This one now has a mixture of uh, some of the substrate in here is moist. Some of the substrate in here is moist. Some of it's dry, I'll let it dry out usually at one end and then keep the lower level a little bit moist, see if they prefer it. I have found even with my blues, I've read and heard that the blues like it a little more arid or from a little more arid environment, but I have found my blues that when I let things dry out too much, they hover around the water dish and that's always a good indication that they like a little moisture. So when I see that, I usually moisten down part of the substrate and let them decide where they wanna be. So there we go, Zanestis species tenebris. Awesome little spiders. Very curious to see what the next molt will bring. This one has looked, as I mentioned before, a little different than the other species. So I'm hoping with the next molt, it'll look even more different and we'll at least have one of these guys that I can tell apart from the other ones. So again, time will tell if this does turns out to be the monstrosa. I almost hope that it does because at least there would be one species I have that's been identified. The genus in a whole is pretty much a mess. And there's a lot of us that feel like when somebody finally examines all the different Zanesta species on the market, it's going to only end up being one or two actual species with others being just color or regional variants. But doesn't really matter because even the slight differences they have, they're just beautiful spiders overall and I don't mind collecting them all, but for folks that are looking at them and the hefty price tag that they carry, just grabbing one will be enough. I don't think there's really a need to go out there and collect them all at this point. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. Click the little circle up there. If you wanna check out some more videos, I will put them over here. If you take the time to comment, I will take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days because I tend to get a lot of comments. That'll do it for this one, guys. As always, stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.